I'm uh, Jack Don Guerra. I work at the uh, University of Tennessee, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and um, Manchester University. So I have a quite um, quite a number of places that I uh, affiliate with. And uh, my area of interests uh, lie with uh, mathematical software. So we've been involved in the development and um, uh, ad adaptation of mathematical software, in particular numerical libraries, um, for many years, for probably the better part of 25 or 30 years. Our software is, um, is open source. We were probably one of the first to have open source uh, software. Much of the software that's developed for these numerical libraries is written in Fortran and also in C. We usually have a binding in, in C and in Fortran for any, any kind of uh, package that's created. It allows for easy use uh, within uh, the environments that most people in, the, in scientific computing uh, could easily uh, address and, and use. We were involved in the creation of the BLAS. So these basic linear algebra subprograms uh, came out of a small group of people who developed the concepts, who exposed it to the community, and who ultimately developed that pseudo standard. That, that was one of our uh, founding uh, foundations for the numerical libraries that we create. And then on top of that are the libraries that we have in, in linear algebra, in particular, in um, solving systems of linear equations and also in eigenvalue problems. So those are, those are the libraries that are created. They're built on top of uh, software layers that uh, have uh, the blahs at their, at their core. So when we move to, uh, for, to the GPU, to a, a hybrid in, environment, um, it was quite natural for us to take that software and to move it uh, to CUDA. So CUDA has a set of laws, it was easy to plug it in and uh, to use it. So the transition to that environment was really quite simple. And we still had to um, uh, adjust some things, so I don't want to make it sound like it was took no effort at all, um, but, but that, that, that movement from the existing base of software to the uh, CUDA environment and to running on the, uh, on the GPU itself uh, was really quite a uh, smooth transition. It allowed for um, considerable performance increase and uh, allowed us to uh, get our uh, first, uh, first initiation in, on, on the machines uh, from NVIDIA and from others uh, to, to, to experiment with. This area of, of hybrid computing I see is really uh, the way for the future. I see that um, machines that we use down the line will be made up of uh, commodity processors, with uh, specialized uh, processor capability. Today we have a situation where they're quite separate in the sense that the uh, commodity processor communicates over a relatively slow link to the, uh, to the graphical processor in this case. But I see over time the integration of those two, those two things to be very tightly coupled and allow for very easy and very fast movement of data. One of the things that um, struck us with uh, using these devices is the fact that single and double precision have quite, um, quite a performance spread. That is, um, uh, in certain cases, it could be a factor of five or even 10 in performance using single over double precision. Now, most of the scientific calculations exist in double precision. So we don't want to give up uh, the accuracy that we, that we have with double precision. So it led us down a path of looking at algorithms or potential algorithms that would exploit single precision computations for the bulk of the computation and then use the double precision to refine the solution. So we have some very interesting and, and I think very, um, very topical algorithms and software today which do most of the computation in single precision, extracting as much performance as they can, getting an accurate uh, answer in that precision, and then using double precision to refine the solution uh, up to the point where we would have gotten had we done the whole computation in double precision. So we can show some bit rather classic algorithms which, uh, which can be expressed this way, and the performance impact is quite dramatic. So we basically run at the speed of single precision. Uh, we do the bulk of the computation order and cubed operations in single precision, and then switch to double precision for the refinement of the solution. And that refinement requires only order and squared operations. 
So we really are getting the benefit of the uh, performance of single precision, yet the algorithms have the ability to capture a full 64-bit uh, uh, accuracy. So I see things going in the future along these lines. That is to say, hybrid architectures will be something that's here, here with us for, for many years. And the fact that single and double have a disparity has been something that actually escaped escaped our eyes, escaped my mind for a long time. Even on our commodity processors, on our Intel or AMD processors, there's a factor of two between single and double precision. So if we can exploit that, it'll be beneficial even in that environment. But clearly with uh, attached processors, GPUs in this context, there's a big improvement that one can see along these lines. And I think that's, that's an interesting avenue for research. It allows us to uh, experiment with new algorithms uh, trying to exploit uh, that architectural feature. Thank you.